In this lesson, I'll introduce you to the pin component and show you how easy it is to use for firmware-based I.O. We're actually going to use two of them. One will be connected to a switch on the board and the other will be directly connected to the LED. Any microcontroller allows you to set up I.O.s, but PSOC makes it really easy and gives you significantly more flexibility. First, you can choose to connect the pin to just about any other pin or IP block in the device. Some micros restrict the connectivity of on-chip functions like PWMs to specific pins. That can mean a respin when the board comes back with the LED on the wrong pin. But PSOC devices have plenty of internal routing that allow you significant flexibility. You can fix board problems with a simple rebuild of the project. Second, you can condition the signal inside of the device. By this I mean you can route a wire to multiple places in the device and modify it by inserting inverters and flip-flops into the signal path. All this allows you to integrate logic into the PSOC device without resorting to firmware. We'll see more of this in the next lesson when we control the pins from the schematic rather than the C code. Let's start by setting up a pin to drive the LED. I start by creating a new project. It's for the PSOC 4 on the Pioneer kit, but this design will work on any PSOC devices. Find the pins component in the component catalog and drag it onto the schematic page. We'll need to set up the pin component by double-clicking to open the configure dialog. Let's name this one LED. You can create a custom name for any PSOC component a feature that will improve your efficiency and help you remember which component you're talking to. We will also turn off the hardware connection because in this case we're going to drive the LED directly from the firmware. In the next lesson, we'll have to turn that back on when we do hardware connections. One of the really useful things about configuring pins with a component is that the setup is independent of the physical pin location. We just gave the pin a name and we can worry about which physical pin to use later on. And if we decide for some reason to move the pin to another location, we can do that without breaking our application firmware. The configuration settings from the dialog you just saw get programmed into the device by PSOC Creator and you just control the pin with the simple provided APIs. We choose the physical pin in the design-wide resources file. You can let the PSOC creator choose the pin for you, or if you have a target board like the PSOC 4 Pioneer kit, you can specify the specific pin to use. The GUI lets me select the pin through a pull-down menu or by dragging the pin onto the picture of the device. On the Pioneer kit, the blue LED is connected to port zero pin three, which is often abbreviated as P zero bracket three. That's all it takes to set up an output pin. You don't need to pour over the device address map or memorize a bunch of register names and bit fields. PSOC Creator generates APIs for all of that when you build the project. Here you can see the source code that controls the pin. These APIs are documented in the component datasheet. I can't stress enough that the component datasheets really are your go-to documents when designing with PSOC Creator. You can get to them from many places, including the configure dialog, the context-sensitive right-hand menu on the component, the component catalog, as well as the document manager. Next, we will write our application firmware using the read and write functions for our pen. The name you gave the component will always be the first part of the API. So the creator generated APIs, in our case, will start with LED underscore. We have LED underscore read as well as LED underscore write that we will use to make the LED blink. To toggle the state of the LED, we read the current state of the pin. Then we invert it using the NOT operator, and then we write the new state back to the pin. We'll also use the CY delay function to slow the PSOC so that we can see the LED blink. CY delay just inserts a customized busy loop of X milliseconds, in this case, 500 milliseconds. Our LED will blink at one hertz, 
500 milliseconds on, 500 milliseconds off. When you click Program, PSOC Creator detects the changes we just made in the project and rebuilds before programming into the actual device. Now that it is programmed, the LED will blink on and blink off every second. We can easily control the speed and create blinking patterns from firmware without having to worry about the register addresses and bit masks. If we laid out our board wrong, we just need to change the design-wide resources file to reassign the pen and rebuild. Absolutely zero C code changes needed. Next, let's add a little bit of user control of the application by connecting a mechanical switch on our board to an input pen. We'll need another pen component from the catalog. This time we'll choose an input pen. Let's name it switch1, SW1, for switch. This switch is active low, which means that it's connected to ground on the board and the pen will read a zero when it is pressed. We need to make sure that it reads a one when the button is not pressed so we'll set the drive mode to be resistive pull-up. That way, when we press the switch, the pen will read a zero, and when not pressed, the pull-up resistor will make sure that the pen reads a one. We use the resources file to choose the right pen on the board. In this case, it's P07. When we generate the APIs for this design, we'll get code both for the LED and for the switch pens. Let's replace our previous code with a simple copy of the switch state into the LED. Now, when you build and program the PSOC, the LED only lights when you press and hold the switch. See if you can reproduce these designs for yourself, then try writing code to vary the blinking patterns. This section was intended to give you a simple introduction to the way that the PSOC Creator design flow works and give you experience with the component catalog, the build and programming process, and the assignment of pens using the design-wide resources. In the next section, we'll give you more detail about having a more hardware-oriented solution to the blinking LED.